Hi guys, the Breakdown Rugby Podcast again. What a game yesterday. My team, the Springboks, lifting up the World Cup trophy for the second time. So much to unpack today, so much to get into. Guys, how are we feeling? <laughs> uh, I mean, what, what really is there to say? Springboks win by one point again. I mean, one thing you can say about them, they know how to win rugby games. Fair enough to them. They've won the World Cup back to back. There's now a conversation about whether this is the best Springboks team of all time. So, yeah, well, well done, Springboks. Yeah, well done. Take victory and go away. Well, look, one thing I'd like to say is with this Springbok team, to win your last three games by one point in a row is something from, from a Morgan Freeman movie. I think to battle against this adversity, we need to really be looking at this team I think above the 2015 All Blacks, after after what we've seen in this tournament, the greatest rugby team of all time in my books. But what do you think swayed the game in South Africa's favour yesterday, would you guys say? Wayne Barnes, the red card. Like, the red card changed the whole game. But I think South Africa just won the small little battles. Like, we always talk about on the podcast. They won the small little battles. And then all of a sudden, the All Blacks just couldn't get, like, a standpoint. couldn't get a grip on the game. And South Africa just clawed it out, really. Yeah, we're right, right. I think a lot of the time we we try and look at tactically, you know, what they did well, what New Zealand did wrong. But at the end of the day, I think what you need to look at is where where these new uh, where these South African players have come from and how far they've come to 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 win this World Cup. And you just when you know about a bit more about their character and who they are, they're just animals. They're just dogs, and they'll fight for every single scrap and win every fifty fifty. So that's probably why they won. For me, the turning point was really that Shannon Frizzell, uh yellow card. Obviously, a really dirty play from him to try and, you know, snap Bongi and Banambi's leg there. But then when, when he went off, all the momentum, all the momentum changed. Everything started to swing in South Africa's favour. But for you guys, do you think that challenge was a yellow? Would you agree with the officiating? Or would you guys go with the red for that one? Uh, y- yellow, Max, for me. Yeah, yeah, it kind of ruined the game. I. If I was in Wayne Barnes' shoes, you know, pinnacle of the rugby career, people wait four years to watch this. Keep him on. For the sake of rugby, keep him on. Like, I, give, him a, give him a yellow card. It changed the game, but keep him on. Like, it's the World Cup. Like, just keep him on. I keep saying keep him on because, like, just keep him on. For, for me, for me, like, what I really thought was uncharacteristic from New Zealand, they almost bottled that game because Jordy Barrett missed three points. Then Richie Moong missed two points off the tee. And I think Richie Mwangi, he got that first hit from Iban Etzebeth and he was never really the same. He never really came into himself, into that game and he looked rattled. And then Jordy Barrett missing that kick from a distance where he usually slots the over for me was just shocking. It's something like we never see with New Zealand. So would you guys say they choked? Uh, no, I, well, yes and no. Uh, um, one way of looking at it is they, they had everything against them. They had a red card. They had a yellow card early on, a man down for a lot of the game. And they and they did well to only lose by one point. I think they could have won in the end. So so yeah, they did choke, choke to an extent, but they still played well, in my opinion. Yeah, there has to be an element of bottle backs in there because look to drop those points in the World Cup final. That wasn't a New Zealand team that we're used to seeing. We're used to seeing an attacking game. I think the game was solely solely rel- dependent on the weather. I think the weather played a massive factor in that game. Because it was raining, South Africa got into their rhythm, they got into their style, the physicality, they made an absolute war. And I think, yeah, I just think the weather really affected it. I don't know. For me, obviously, I feel like it's hard to argue against for the about the weather, but because it brains for both teams. But the seven-one split in terms of the dominance and, and all of that that we saw from South Africa, I was surprised because they never really won any scrum penalties. But I think it's like what Kieran was saying earlier: all the small things were going in South Africa's favor. All the small things. Um, and yeah, I don't know, but for you guys, in terms of if we're looking at legacies of the players, which players on the Springbok teams are you looking at now and saying, you know what, this player has a, a, a case for the GOAT status, this player could be considered one of the greatest players of all time, if you had to say one each? What, greatest player of all time from that uh, Springbok team? Um... Khaleesi. Yeah. It has to be Khaleesi. Like, Khaleesi is the guy, isn't he? Like, back to two back-to-back World Cup captains, like, he is, he's the guy. I think Eben Etzebeth has to be in that conversation. Um, Pollard, maybe, for how he how he conducted himself. But yeah, those are the, those are the players. And Chesney Colby. Chesney Colby's the greatest player to play the game. Here, yeah. For, for me, I you forgot agree. one guy. I would agree with that. But for me, you forgot one guy. P- 
Peter Stephanie Tour, in my opinion, is a back to back the best ever World Cup finalist performance I've ever seen. The, yeah. He made 28 tackles. And he did a single tackle. The guy's unreal. But, Rohan, if, if you had to nominate one, who would you nominate? No, I, I would agree with you on Pete Steff. I would agree with Kieran that Ches and Colby is now the greatest winger of all time. One thing I think I struggle to agree with is Andre Pollard. Andre Pollard, sorry. Oh, um, I think he's now, look, he's one of the best fly halves to play the game. No doubt about that. He's maybe, maybe top 10, maybe at a push, maybe, maybe top six, top seven. But I to, to say he's in the GOAT conversation now after that, for me, I, I just don't see it. Oh yeah, what do you reckon? I I want to make one final point. Um, in my in my case, Peter Sestertori now for me has gone past Richie McCaw as the greatest seven. Yeah, it's not ridiculous. I, I think, <laughs> like, like Taddy mentioned, the two back to back finals where I was did he get man of the match in the 20, 2019 final? I think Dwayne did. Uh, Dwayne right so. His performance in that 2019 final, we we all said that he was a massive reason why South Africa won. And then in this final, making 28 tackles and then getting man of the match like that, and if that kind of element and that kind of hype to the game, for me, Peter Sattatoy is the greatest seven we're going to see. Yeah, I, I completely agree. His volume, like, he's one of those players. I feel like New Zealand, you could look at a few players that they had, Carter and McCall, they didn't need them to win. You know, New Zealand proved they could win games without Carter McCall, but South Africa could never win games without Peter Stefti Toy. And where, well, question round on the Pollard take is, Brown, would you just, I know you're a Finn Russell fan, would you have Finn Russell all time over Andrew Pollard? I think, I think Finn Russell's a better player than Pollard, yeah. Yeah, and what's your take on that? No comment. No. Well, question for you guys. I've seen it touted a lot on social media. Some South African fans is talking about this. Obviously, South Africa won. Where do you guys rank Razi Ninabar all time in terms of coaches? Do they now go over Steve Hansen um, in 2015? Are they arguably the greatest coaching duo that the, the game has seen? Oh, yeah. Without without a doubt, they are the best coaching duo. If you look at what they've been given compared to what the All Blacks were given, in my opinion, the All Blacks have a lot more weapons in 2015, a lot more talent than this Springboks team now has. Uh, Razi and Nina Bar just found a way with a team that, in my opinion, isn't player for player the best in the world. They found a way to win the tournament. So, mm. so yeah, I think, I think, yeah, they, they are now the best coaching duo of all time. I think for me, it's interesting now looking at like where things are going to go. Uh, I almost think this is, this is indicative of like the decline of the All Blacks, this result in the final. But I, I'm, I'm thinking South Africa could maybe win three World Cups in a row now. I, I think I think I think that could potentially be done. That's the final point I just wanted to ask you guys before we wrap up. I, I can't I can't I can't mentally deal with having another World Cup in, in 2027 yet and not that South African hype behind it. I can't deal with it yet. Give me but give I, me a couple of years just to hibernate and I'll I'll come back. Um I think there's a lot of very good young New Zealand players, a lot of good young English players, French players. I mean, I mean, I know, I know. We in the build-up to this World Cup, we spoke about the Northern Hemisphere um, balancing out with the Southern Hemisphere. But I think come the next World Cup, that will actually be the case. Yeah. I think um, I, I want to say on this podcast, right? Rohan betted that France would win the World Cup. I betted that Ireland would win the World Cup, and I want to say personally, from Kieran to you to, to Taddy, you have got this spot on, and I got it wrong. I have to say it. Finally, I'm gonna admit it. You got it. You got it right. You got spot on. You backed the uh, the the spring box from the very start, and well done, mate. Well, Kieran, I I just want to say thank you. Um, it's interesting. I think we'll do a video on uh on our our World Cup predictions. We should do a video where we react to our World Cup predictions. But no, I don't know. I think with me for France and Ireland, I always was just like mm, I was never really sold on them. But the box, I just I I had a feeling they would win. I had a feeling they would win. But Ram, what do you reckon? Um, it's t it's tough for me because I thought I thought if New Zealand were brave and they attacked and they exploited the space that South Africa leave in the backfield, then they would win. But I mean, loads of things happen that you just can't plan for, like a early yellow, a red card, mm. and then suddenly you've got to switch up your game plan. And and there's no team better than South Africa uh, just just grinding teams down. Yeah, no, no, I completely agree, man. But it should be so interesting to see what happens after the World Cup with the Rugby Championships and Six Nations to come and Autumn Internationals next year. But from us to you guys, the breakdown, we're going to be giving you our World Cup wrap-up shortly, maybe next week. 
But this is our last World Cup post-game review. Until 2027, thank you very much. We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.